to China and ne'er bottle of champagne. So I'm looking at someone, call the cops, please. And you're just walking in the middle of this neighborhood. We're Miller Street, and I spot a pizza delivery man, and I call him over. Are the cops around here a lot? Why do you ask? I'm ripping, I'm taking them down. I'm ripping them off. Really? Yeah. Here you go. For you. Really? Yeah, take it. Go. Go. Get out of here. I thought, I thought you saw the cops. You didn't see the cops around, did you? No. Uh, Get out of here. I thought. Uh, thanks, man. Bye. The family that owned this house was outraged when we showed them the tape. The notion that you could just come in here and charm him with a bottle of wine or a bottle of champagne with a big smile on your face and a cigar in your mouth, that's, that's kind of scary. That's real scary. Let's talk about some of the responsibilities of the Neighborhood Watch members. As you know, the Neighborhood Watch provides extra eyes and ears for the police department. Neighborhood Watch does not give citizens... Oh, <laughs> the people who really know John know he did not do it, and he's not capable of that. He told me I have to sit there day after day after day. It took a lot out of him. The last few years of John Carpenter's life, he was financially ruined. He was emotionally ruined, philosophically and uh, spiritually broken. Um, he had lost his, uh, you know, his, his job at, uh, at Kenwood. Um, they kept it as long as he could. It took its toll on him at the end, and I think he, he didn't, he tried his best not to let on to people that were close to him how much it did affect him. You know, that the, just the stresses and the, the things that, uh, you know, had gone on. John Carpenter had longevity in his family. Um, you know, all of his, his aunts and uncles and that, they lived to, you know, if not into their hundreds, close to their, in their 90s. And, you know, here he was at, uh, you know, 72 years of age, died of a heart attack. 